The Bible speaks of one God, three persons. And here, as Jesus enumerates, God is going to work through you, my disciples, as you go out into the world. You're going to baptize people, and you're going to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so we know Father and Son are persons of the Godhead. Here we have a third person being mentioned. He's put on the same footing as Father and Son. It's the Holy Spirit. He's the third person of the Godhead. He's spoken of as a person. And I guess I want to emphasize that because every so often, you read the last 2,000 years of Christianity, every so often you'll see people saying, there aren't three people in the Godhead. And one of the biggest misnomers I hear is, that's a pagan thing. And it's, no, no, no. The Godhead is quite different from the pagan pantheons. It really is. Uh, and again, that'd be a topic for a whole show. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, I in particular have seen over the centuries that people have attacked whether or not this is a person or just some sort of emanating force that comes out of God, like his essence or his light or that kind of thing. And I even remember when Star Wars came out in the 1970s, people were saying in churches, um, you know, the Holy Spirit, that's like the force in Star Wars. It's this mysterious force that goes through people, and then they can do powerful things. It's Luke Skywalker using the force to blow up the Death Star. And my answer to that is, no, that is not what the Holy Spirit is. He is not some mysterious force. He's not like the, you know, the um, Eastern concept of the key of this mysterious force that flows through you, but not a person. As, I, as you read the Bible, Jesus speaks, uh, and, and the Bible authors all speak of the Holy Spirit, not as a force, but as a person. Um, I've, got, I've got some texts. You interested in some texts? I, I am. Yeah. Here, I'll do these quickly um, because we, we want to get through this whole lesson. And so you might want to jot these down if you're out there listening and have always wondered, how do we know the Spirit is a person? In John 14, 26, this passage we were just in, um, it t tells us that the Holy Spirit teaches. Jesus says he will teach you all things. That's a conscious decision. You can't teach people unless you're a conscious entity. Mm -hmm. Your teacher is, is not some mysterious force. They're up front teaching you what they know. So the Spirit knows things and teaches. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, um, Paul says, We impart in this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit. So Paul had been taught by the Spirit. He didn't say God used a mysterious force to reach me. Jesus threw a force. He says, no, the Spirit taught me these things. So the Spirit teaches. The Spirit speaks. Acts chapter 13 says, verse 13, 30, uh, not 32, 2. Acts 13, 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul. Mm. So he speaks. It doesn't say God said this through his spirit. It says the Holy Spirit said. So he teaches, he speaks. Acts 15, verse 28, we see that the Spirit can make decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit to lay uh, for and to us to lay on you no greater burden than these requirements. So the Holy Spirit pondered the situation and said, yeah, that's not what I want. You know, this, he, so he can thank, he can pardon, he, you can grieve the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 4, verse three, uh, 30. You can lie to the Spirit. Remember that story, oh, yeah. Acts chapter 5? Ananias and Sapphira. Right. Mm -hmm. So why have you lied to the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? You have not lied to men, but to God, they say. So they lie to the Holy Spirit, who is God, but he's a person of the Godhead like Jesus is. Um, he can forbid you to do things. Acts 16, verse 6, they went through the regions of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. You know, that's that's always has been an interesting text, I mean, an interesting concept, yeah. that the Spirit forbade us. That, 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 meant, that meant that they had to be speaking and um, with the Spirit in prayer and process and listening right. to God. And God will change your plans. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that interesting. Sometimes I've had my way blocked. I think I've got a really good idea for ministry and reaching the world with the gospel, and I find it all fall to pieces, and I'm thinking, why God? But sometimes God stops you because it might have ended in a disaster or a church being persecuted, or he had something else in mind, whatever mm -hmm. it is. But you'll notice again, it's the Spirit that does these things. 1 Corinthians 2, the Spirit searches everything. Um he intercedes for us where we don't know how to pray. It says that he... So you have all the characteristics of personality. There's no question the New Testament speaks of the Holy Spirit not as a mysterious force like Eastern mysticism, but as a genuine full person of the Godhead. 